Welcome to your ultimate guide to CHK Fine Arts. I'm Emmy. I just graduated from this major recently because two years ago, I uploaded a video about CHK Fine Arts like interview and share about my school-based assessment back in high school. But that was like a really long time ago. In this video, I'm going to cover a lot of things about this major because it seems like no one's talked about it on YouTube. So I think I will be the one who share the things, my experience and things I know about it. So before this video begins, here's a little disclaimer. The things that I'm going to mention in this video you can take it as a reference but situation and things might be changed in the future but this is by far the most up-to-date version actually i use quite a lot of time to sum up these information these notes and based on my four years experience on this major so if you think they're useful please give me a thumbs up so this video is going to separate in two parts because it's too long so with that being said let's get started so how did I get into CHK Fine Arts major, the undergraduate degree? Long story short, I applied through the Jufa system. It's a system called the George University Program Administration System in Hong Kong. So technically, our major provides 20 quarters for the Jufa's application each year. In case you never watched my videos before, I was not come from a prestigious secondary school. My case is worse than you think, because I came from a so-called bad secondary school if it's based on the banding system. If watching this and also come from a three school, I would say it's not the end of the world. World. There's a big background information for a reference. I took the DS exam in 2017, which is also the year that I got into this major. I spent five years in college and there were two semesters I spent studying abroad and being an exchange student in the States. So back in 2017, my DSE score were two marks lower than the lower quartile of that year of Jupiter's administration four. I remember when I was arranging my priority for the Jupiter's uh, program choices, all of my secondary school teachers kept telling me, you shouldn't do that. They meant I should not put the CHK Fine Arts major onto A1 choice. Honestly, there were no single person think that I can make it. Especially my visual arts only got level 4 on DSE exam. But I listened to my heart and intuition. I filtered all the noise around me. And finally, I proved them wrong. Another thing about this major is I guess a lot of people don't know that our Department of Fine Arts was actually the first tertiary institute to offer courses on studio practice and the history of visual arts in Hong Kong. So some people may ask, does your DSE score or visual arts score matter? So based on my observation and honest opinion, they matter, but at the same time, they also doesn't matter. Why would I say that? I don't think you should value your DSE score that much. Of course, you need to fulfill the basic requirements of the admission, but the score is not everything. It's only showing the skills that you ace the exam. Under all those so-called standards decided by the Hong Kong Examination and Assessment Authority, what matters the most is how the professor, how they can see your potential, possibility, passion, and love through your work. Artwork is basically a mirror reflecting who you are, how you see the world, how deeply you think, and how honest you face your own self. It's like philosophy, honestly. I mean, for those professors, they can literally see through you as a person from the work you made. It's hard to lie. Everything in your works are showing the professor and others of who you truly are. And now I'm going to explain the whole degree structure based on my personal experience and the most up-to-date information. CHK Fine Arts is a four-year undergraduate degree, but it's quite normal to defer your graduation. The maximum can even up to six years. Of course, you need to have valid reasons to do that. Maybe because of exchange, minor, double minor, or other personal reasons. So take me as an example. I spent four years at CHK Fine Arts and two semesters studying abroad in the United States. So my total year of study is five years. What I'm gonna explain here is based on a four year undergraduate study. So before I start, you should know what is credit or unit. University credits measure the number of applied hours that are recognized for successful completion of a particular course of study. So for CHK Fine Arts, the total credits required for graduation are at least 123 credits. So I'm gonna show you two tables of how it works. So the first table is related to Fine Arts major and courses. So as you can see from the table, we've got Art History, Modern Art Studio, Art History, and Art Studio. 
these three mainstreams. So art history studied the historical development of art with a special emphasis on China. Modern art studio stream trained students in the practice of artistic creation. Art history and art studio stream applied equal emphasis on both. So for those who don't know, our major teaches both Western art and also Chinese art um, on both art history and modern art studio side. So fine art students are required to complete a minimum of 72 university credits. So different stream means different ratio of participation on either like art history courses or modern art studio courses. As you can see from the table for art history stream, you have to study more art history courses than modern art studio courses. And for modern art studio stream, it's the opposite. But for art history and art studio stream, it's just equal, like divided into both. Actually, you don't have to declare your stream on freshman year, but you must declare one of the streams at the beginning of your third year of attendance. So you should plan what kind of courses you want to take carefully. So for your final year of attendance, which is usually year four, year five, it depends on when is your last year of study, all students must participate a graduation exhibition. So we call it as grad show. So our history stream need to write a thesis but for modern art studio stream, student needs to make artwork. It can be any kinds of art mediums, for instance, like painting or even Chinese painting, calligraphy, mixed media, photography, video, any kinds of medium that you can think of. And for art history and art studio stream students, you can pick either like write a thesis or make an artwork. What's the required courses on the second row? Required courses are basically the fundamental courses on your first year of study. For instance, drawing fundamentals, principle of Chinese painting, principle of Chinese calligraphy, Fundamentals of three dimensional forming, artistic traditions in China. But actually, minority of these courses will assign in year two, like Western painting fundamentals, artistic tradition in the West. Finally, for faculty package, which is on the first row, for finance major student, you have to study nine credits for those courses they provided to you from the Faculty of Arts, like introductory courses. For me, I picked the cultural management and music faculty package course. So we call them fact pack in short term. Here's the second table and also the last table you need to understand. This table is applicable for students admitted in 2022 to 2023 and thereafter, but the requirements might also be changed in the future, so you may just take it as a reference. This table shows the university core courses requirements and is not related to anything about fine arts major. All things showing here are mandatory, but I'm not going to explain this too much. If you want to know more about the details, you can check out the undergraduate student handbook, which I will put on the info box. So in general, I'm going to explain each year briefly from year one to year four. When you're in year one, most courses are pre-assigned that there are not that much of free credits that you can register. It's basically focused on the more fundamental things on both Chinese and Western art. For year two, there are few pre-assigned courses. It's relatively more free than um, year one. So in year three, you are most free to select the courses that you're interested. Also at the beginning of your year three, or we can say one year before your actual final year, you need to declare your stream and on year four, it's usually your final year of study. It's also the most free to select courses, but as I know, there are some students who would like to pick more courses focusing on when they're in year one to year three so that they can have more time to work on their graduation work in the final year. At the beginning of year four, you need to select your graduation thesis or graduation artwork advisor based on the stream that you belong to. And there's another chance to change your advisor in semester two. So your graduation work or thesis will start from the beginning of your final year, which is semester one. At the end of semester two, it will be the deadline of neither your graduation thesis or graduation artworks. So the deadline is usually the last week of May each year. And the graduation show will normally begin in June. No matter for thesis or artwork, they will all showcase in the same location 
is not only just showcasing the artwork your paper we also displays showing to the audience from the show and for the entire graduation show the ultimate theme is designed up by all final year students so we need to brainstorm the theme or topic together starting from semester one all final year students must choose their themes for graduation show for instance like pr team editorial team venue team design team and maintenance team etc so every final year student must belong to one of the teams for like the whole graduation show by the way our major also has a local collaboration with hkbu uh, academy of visual arts we are allowed to select some courses from them but each semester is different for example like 3d software fundamentals prototyping hypermedia design web design with content management system i think from 2021 our major proposed a new minor program called curating and artistic strategies it cuts across a variety of topics within the fields of fine arts and cultural management. It's like students need to take both required courses from cultural management and also fine arts major and any four courses they provided from their list. It's 18 units in total for taking this minor program. So there are three main languages that we use for teaching. They are Cantonese, English and Mandarin. So that's why for the university admission interview, they mentioned that it would conduct in three languages. And I remember back to the days, I posted a video about a day in my life at the Chinese University of Hong Kong, that vlog. That's one common set. Why is using Mandarin? We will use both these three languages is not only Mandarin, but honestly, most courses are literally teaching in Cantonese, especially for studio art courses. But for art history courses, they are quite a lot using English. It actually depends on who's the professor and where are they come from. Because they're a professor from foreign countries like French and South Korea. So basically for their courses, it will usually conduct in English. But for professors from um, Hong Kong or local, they will just use Cantonese. And previously, there were some professors from mainland China. So in their class, um, they will use Mandarin. For instance, like some Chinese delineated painting. If you want, you can actually just take the whole degree in Cantonese. I think this is like a really rare thing amount all those majors SUHK because because I think most major SUHK are taught in English but fine arts major is an exception as you already know we have to learn both Chinese and Western art they both cover on studio classes and art history classes because I think their really emphasis on both practical and theoretical practice is relatively balanced on each side so for Chinese art studio courses we have courses like Chinese calligraphy, including like clerical and regular scripts, running and cursive scripts, xie yi, Chinese expressive painting, Chinese delineated paintings like birds, flowers, and figures, Chinese landscape painting, seal carving, and ceramics, etc. For Western art studio class, examples like Western painting, which is oil painting, pre-making, mixed media, moving image, photography, experimental drawing, watercolor. Basically, for all art studio courses, we must have critique section, um, which usually happens at the end of the semester, except for some small discussion and critiques based on the experiments and practices that we've done in class. Simply say, critiques is after all those learning students need to present their artwork in front of the professor and all other students in class you present your work and everyone is involved to discuss it's like symposium and suddenly there's a memory pop up in my mind when i was a sophomore back to the days i remember that time i was learning oil painting for the first time and at the end of the semester i need to finish a few paintings i never forget that i didn't sleep for two nights continuously just within a week it's like non-stop painting for the whole week I was like procrastinate, put all-nighters. And that time when I went back to uni for critique after I finished all those paintings, I literally waited for four hours for just present my work and join the critique section. 
But the thing is, even after four hours, students and the professors are still discussing their work and it was still not my turn to present my painting. I mean, critique can be that long, maybe can even over five hours, six hours, who knows. And I remember there was a Chinese painting professor once said he won't give student A for his class because he thinks the highest grade A means perfect and perfection is impossible. Personally, I think it's actually pretty hard to get A range in those studio art courses. But on the other hand, art history courses are more easier than studio art classes because honestly, I think writing a paper is much more easier than making an artwork. When talking about Chinese art history classes, example like Arts of Asian China, Neolithic through Bronze Age, Art along the Silk Road, History of Early Chinese Ceramics, Classical Traditions of Chinese Calligraphy, Religious Art of China and stuff. And for Western Art History class, something like Western Art 2 from Impressionism to the late 1940s, Modern Challenges, Chinese art of the 20th century, artistic strategies in the postmodern era, Western art one from the 15th to the late 19th century. I think the assessment methods for art history classes are pretty predictable, I would say. Always like presentation based on some readings or whatever, term paper like midterm paper and final paper, exam, and that would be it. So these are like the three really major assessment method for art history courses and usually I think even for exam it's not that common too so for me it's more easy to handle and of course different professors have their own styles on assessment methods but personally in my opinion the Chinese art history classes are a little bit more complicated than the western art ones so for the workload part the workload of studio classes are way more than the art history classes it's really time consuming even just for one studio art class I remember there was one semester I got three studio art classes and I was literally dying inside out and do you remember what I said all the studio art classes are putting the deadlines to the end of the semester can you even imagine finish 15 paintings, 4 studio artwork, 2 art history final papers, and 1 exam in just 2 weeks. That was horrible and I realized it's such a pleasure to sleep over 8 hours a night. And I can show you some of my previous schedule. They were all packed with countless deadlines. So in the next part, I will talk about exchange, internship, exhibition creating opportunity, career path, and I'm going to also share about some useful resources to you. If you want to know more, please stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.